got to understand the natural reality to understand the supernatural reality. Why? Because grace perfects nature. Nature. Grace perfects nature. Why is the enemy after the natural reality of gender and generation? Because mm. he's after the supernatural reality. If he skews the natural reality, if we don't understand the natural reality, we're not going to understand the supernatural reality. Mm. That's what the sexual revolution was all about. And that brings us back to... Final lap. Elvis, <laughs> yeah. which is the first lap, I would say. Yeah, right. And then how did we get from Elvis and Hugh Hefner to where we are today. Can we talk about that? Yeah. So let me let me say a few more things about Elvis and why I've been on this Elvis trip. So with one one little twitch of his lip, one little twitch of his shoulder, this power goes out from Elvis and he awakens the passions of a generation. And those passions had been repressed. That, that's, you know, a hundred years ago, the sight of a woman's ankle could cause scandal. Uh, the sexual revolution is like an explosion of that approach, right? We repress, we press down. John Paul II says it himself in Love and Responsibility. If your approach to purity is to press down into the subconscious all of your sexual desires and reactions, mm. it's only a Whack matter a of time yeah. before... Comes up. Mm. And that's what the sexual revolution was. It was, that's who Elvis was. I'm not holding this in anymore. I got this fire in me. I'm a hunk, hunk of burning love and it's coming out, right? But when he released those passions, you could say they, they, they stayed horizontal. Mm -hmm. And if we just direct those passions horizontally, where do you end up? You end up backstage in all the de Elvis debauchery of what happened after a show where women idolized Elvis. Elvis awakened their passions and they thought Elvis could also satisfy them. And this is where we get it wrong. The things God has created. Who created Elvis? God. God. God created Elvis. Elvis is meant to be, as we all are, icons of the divine. He's made in the image and likeness of God. Mm. El icons can and are meant to awaken our passions for the divine. But icons mm. cannot satisfy our passions as they say for the in, uh, in the east right they're windows to heaven windows to heaven yeah no 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 catholic has ever stopped at an icon and went no this is actually right. it this if you is stop Mary, at you the know? wood and paint of an icon yeah that's an and idol. think this is it now it's an idol yeah and you're an idiot yeah let's look at elvis as an icon right he awakened people's passions if you take your passions back to elvis backstage which happened all the time and all kinds of debauchery if you watch the documentaries it was horrible mm horrible what where that idolatry led and it always happens idolatry first leads to debauchery and then debauchery leads to a despising of our sexuality and we could say it this way you will always or eventually you will despise whatever you idolize because the idol you think at first hmm. it will satisfy you so you go to it and it does give us some semblance of satisfaction. Otherwise, we wouldn't go to them. Mm. But it cannot satisfy what it has awakened, because what it has awakened is a passion for infinite joy, yeah. infinite fulfillment. Christianity holds out precisely this promise, that there is a banquet. If this is real, we got to tell them. There's a banquet that really corresponds to the hunger. Hmm. Matt, if that's real, we have to do what Jesus said, which was go into the main streets and tell everybody to starve to death. <laughs> that's not what he said. He's go into the main streets and invite everyone to the wedding feast. We could put it this way. Okay, if Elvis is the king, there's one greater than Elvis here now. He's the king of kings, right? If Elvis awakened your passions mm. but could not satisfy them, the king of kings, if, if the king can awaken your passions but not satisfy them, the king of kings can awaken your passions and satisfy them. And he does so with his body. He 
does so with his power. Elvis set off a revolution because of the power that went out from his body. Mm. But think of the power that went out from Jesus' body. <laughs> think of the woman who, who reached out to touch him with the hemorrhage, right? Mm -hmm. If I just touch him, if I just touch him, I'll power be healed. Power went out of him. Power yeah. went out of him. Somebody touched me. What do you mean somebody touched you? There's 100 people all crowding all around you. They're all touching you. No, no. Power went out from my body. And we don't tend to think of this because we don't like to because we're afraid because it's too intimate. It's too, it's too, it gets too close. But where was she bleeding? Mm -hmm. She was bleeding in her womb. Power went out from his body into what part of her body? Hmm. Into her womb. Into her womb. There's a kind of mystical nuptials taking place here. Virginal, mystical nuptials. Power from the bridegroom's body went into her womb. And it says that she had suffered greatly at the hands, it says, at the hands of many physicians, many doctors. And we can read into that maybe a bit and imagine what kind of abuse might she have been receiving at the hands of these men? We, we don't know for sure, but we, we have permission in, in reading Scripture to bring our own issues into it. And if there's a, women out there who've been, have had men's hands cause them great, great pain in their most intimate places, this is a story of profound healing for those who have suffered at the hands of men. And look how, look how intimate it is. This is that tender touch of the bridegroom. This is where if we just live that ruptured spirituality, we, we think this whole even meditation that I'm offering is, is impious or something. No, 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 this is the healing our real humanity needs. When we don't allow our real, our real mm. wounded places to be touched by the Lord, our real wounded places to be touched by the Lord, yeah. then all we have is a pious mask to wear and we keep our real wounds hidden. And we remain in that place, I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid myself. Mm. I, I would say, the journey of the interior life, the purgative, the illuminative, the unitive, must become for all of us. And I know how difficult it is and scary it is. And, and if there are people out there listening who, who feel in any way that I'm, I'm scolding or shaming, I am not. I'm inviting. I want to invite those who've lived this ruptured life, spiritual life over here, shameful stuff over here. I, I want to invite them to trust in the Lord's perfect love and to know that that perfect love casts out that fear and that the journey of the interior life is precisely the reversal of that fear. It's a transformation from, I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid myself. It becomes, and this is what I learned from Albacete, really, I was at peace because I knew he loved me, so I exposed myself. Mm. I exposed myself to his love. I poured it all out. Mm. And it may have smelled like S-H-I-T to me, but it smells like glorious nard to him. Mm. And I believe we're at the last lap of the sexual revolution because we are now despising the body in this new wave of genital mutilation. Inevitably, we will despise what we idolize. The sexual revolution began with Elvis and Hugh Hefner and many others in the 50s and 60s with an idolizing of the body, saying, this is what you want, this is what you want, this is what you want. And I get it, I get it. Here's my, my metaphor, my working metaphor is uh, when Christianity is presented as a starvation diet, your desires are bad, you need to repress all that, just follow these rules. 
Well, inevitably, we're going individually and collectively, by and large, people will, be, will become converts to what I call the fast food gospel which is the secular culture's promise of immediate gratification for your hunger. And don't lie to me, those chicken nuggets and Big Macs taste really good going down, especially when you're really hungry. Yeah. But eventually, that's your diet, it's gonna mm. cause you a lot of grief. You're gonna not be healthy, you're gonna be sick. In fact, you're gonna, your body's gonna start to shut down and you're gonna start to despise what you've idolized. Okay. We've idolized sex, we've idolized the body, we've idolized masculinity and femininity. We hate it because it couldn't give us what we now thought it we, would. Exactly. Say yeah, that it loudly God, again. Yeah. Say it again. We, we hate it because it wouldn't give us what we thought it would, what we thought Ex it promised it would, because it could never give us because exactly. it wasn't God. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Thank you for watching this clip. You can click here to watch the full episode. And I want to say a big thanks to our sponsors and to our amazing patrons for making all of this possible. Please do us a favor before you go, click that subscribe button and then the bell. And that way YouTube will be forced to let you know every time we put out a new episode.